What's going on guys? In this video, we are actually going to be talking about Bitcoin. That's right. A lot of people over the past year have been really trusting Bitcoin, starting to invest in it, and things like Robinhood is making it easier and easier for any trader to hop on the Bitcoin bandwagon. Robinhood has a couple of other cryptos as well, but this entire video is just going to be understanding exactly what Bitcoin is. Now sure, you've probably heard of things like blockchain technology and claim you know what that means, but I mean, do we really understand that? I know I used to always say, yeah, yeah, block, you know, it's a chain of blocks. I know exactly what it is, but I honestly really didn't know to the full extent what it meant until I took a deep dive in to learn about it. And I actually am now starting to invest in some cryptos. I'm keeping that between one and 5% of my overall portfolio, because obviously, I'm all about stocks. I know how stocks work inside and out. That's going to stay around 90 to 95% of my portfolio. But I'm learning that this little coin is gonna be worth a lot more than any of this ever will be. This is a depreciating asset. This is an appreciating asset. So what better way to teach you guys than to make a nice little doodle graphic thing on my computer and I'm just gonna try to break it down real simple so you can fully understand it because before you invest in anything you should understand what you're investing in that's how investing works if you're putting money into something that you don't understand that's not investing that's gambling and you shouldn't be doing that now of course before we dive on the computer guys make sure to smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't already helping me boost that algo. And you can check out the links below. I got Patreon, I got a shop with some cool uh, stock market shirts if you wanna do that. If not, that's all right, but let's dive into this video. All right, so Bitcoin, exactly what is it? For us to fully understand Bitcoin and make sound investments in it, we need to go back in time. And when I say go back in time, I mean back to 1971, when the White House made the decision to drop gold. That's right. The US dollar used to be backed by gold. And in 1971, we fully dropped the gold standard. Before that, I think it was around 1931. Uh, that's when we actually suspended the gold standard. And that's because of us going to war and us not being able to pay back our war debts. So the government thought, hey, I got a better idea. Let's create something called fiat. Now, no, I'm not talking about the fiat car. I'm talking about the good old American dollar. That's right. The money that we have today is known as fiat money, or as I like to call it, monopoly money, because that's all it is. It is not backed by anything. The government has complete control over it. This is called centralized money. So exactly what does that mean? Well, that means the government has control over our money. They can determine the interest rates. They can determine how much they want to print or how much they want to destroy and they distribute it to us at the end of the day. Now, this worked wonders during World War II when we need to print more money and to get us out of a depression. They're able to give us certain stimulus packages, which I think we all know how stimulus packages work now, but there's a lot of concern over this, and one of the big things is called inflation. Now, you guys probably know what inflation is or at least have an idea of how inflation works, but so... Where does the money come from? It's not actually the government. It's the Federal Reserve or the Feds, as people call it for short. So pretty much the Feds control our money. We are trusting this central bank to control our money. And this has been working for the past couple of decades. But we all know that the dollar has slowly been decreasing, right? You could go into a bank and buy a lot more with a $20 bill back in 1945 than you can today. You could hardly buy cereal and milk for 20 bucks. Not really, maybe if you live on Long Island. But in 2020, the feds got a shiny new printer. And what did they do with that printer? Well, they turned it on and they have not stopped printing more and more money, giving a bunch of stimulus packages to a whole bunch of people, the PPP loan, uh, all of this SBA money, and all of the sweet, sweet stimmies that we have been getting over the past year. I think we're what? We're up to number three as I'm recording this video. Now, this is great for people who need it, but at the end of the day, there's a lot of concern over this. What's happening to the value of the dollar as we continue to print this? Well, some economists think that this is going to decrease the dollar. Others say it's not, and it's not going to really raise inflation, but we've already seen a, over a 50% increase in the interest rate. So that could be a sign of the weakening dollar and a weakening economy. Now, a lot of people don't like this thought. 
thought that we are giving this one body, the Federal Reserve, all this control over money. So that is when Bitcoin comes into play. All right, for us to understand exactly what Bitcoin is, we need to go back to the beginning. And I'm talking about 2009 when Satoshi Nakamoto, I may or may not be saying that name right, invented this beautiful blockchain called Bitcoin. Now, we're going to get to blockchain in a second, but first, let's really talk about exactly what Bitcoin is. So I want you guys to understand that. So Bitcoin is the complete opposite of the dollar. It is decentralized. No one, no single body can own Bitcoin or control it. And that's because you have all these people all over the world contributing to the growth of Bitcoin. And these people, you could call them miners or investors, depending on which side of the coin you're on. Now, you may be thinking, hold on, miners, what does that mean? We're going to review that in a second. It's not like you're grabbing a shovel and you're going to start digging for gold. No, no, no. Instead, you're going to be setting up servers and digging for Bitcoin. But we're going to review that in a second. But this is why a lot of people like the concept of Bitcoin. It is decentralized. No one can control it. You can't have a government that steps in and the government hates that. But guess what? We hate the government. So it's okay. It's a win-win for us. So let's talk about miners. Exactly what are they? You need to understand this. And this is an integral part of Bitcoin. So you get people all over the world that will host their computers to support Bitcoin. Okay, so you theoretically could turn on your computer and become a Bitcoin miner. What this allows you to do is you're hooking up to this blockchain network and you're contributing to Bitcoin. So you may be thinking, how is this possible? What do you mean? Well, Bitcoin is essentially a public general ledger, all right? And everyone could view this ledger Everyone sees every single transaction. You have all these miners that are verifying and maintaining these transactions. And Bitcoin is really starting to take over the world. Every single country is starting to adopt Bitcoin one way or another. People are jumping onto the bandwagon and starting to invest in Bitcoin or become miners. Now, I know you're probably still a little confused with what I mean by miners. We're going to dive more into exactly what blockchain is and how these miners work. But if there's one thing I want you to take away from this video, just remember that it's decentralized. So no single body can own or have the power over Bitcoin. And and the blockchain technology behind Bitcoin is a huge public general ledger, kind of like the internet. People can't have control over the internet. Or think of the English language. It's not like someone could have control over the English language. It's all over the world. It's decentralized. Everyone could use it. So now let's talk more about blockchain technology. Exactly what is it and how does it work? Well, you see, there's something called a Genesis block. That's the very first block that was made for Bitcoin. When it was first released in 2009 and all of these coins were released, And then people start buying it, people start mining it, and people start making transactions. And as a transaction happens, picture that as another line on the ledger. So when we see this transaction, it's then connected to the previous block. There's code within the next block created that has remnants of the last block and vice versa. All right. And this is what makes it a blockchain. As more and more transactions happen, it actually makes this chain stronger and harder to hack. Now, I could really go into exactly how blockchain works, and that could be a whole nother video. But I just want you to understand that for every time someone buys through Bitcoin or makes an exchange through Bitcoin, let's say Sally buys a Tesla from Elon Musk with one Bitcoin that's worth $54,000 a new block will be created and everyone around the world could verify that block to make sure it's legitimate and there's nothing fishy going on. So now let's jump back to the miners. And this is the miner's job. The miners not only are hosting this server, right? It's not like you have a company, picture like Google Docs, okay? Or Google Drive. So that's a big server that Google owns and we're all using it. We have spreadsheets on that. We have Google Docs, Google Slides. You could upload pictures. And the cloud doesn't exist. It's just on another person's computer. And it's on Google's computer, essentially. And they have complete control over that. 
being an organization, they can do whatever they want with that. They could deny access if they wanted. They could block us from the server. Bitcoin is like a big server, but again, no company owns it. It's all of these individual miners around the world who are maintaining and supporting this server. And now this is why blockchain is so important. All of these miners need to verify transactions. So when a new transaction happens, they verify it. And if one of them finds something fishy or something suspicious, and they think maybe this is an illegal transaction or someone's trying to hack into the blockchain, then it gets dropped. That block gets dropped and it gets canceled out. So that's why it's extremely hard for anyone to hack into blockchain because you have one hacker up against millions and millions of miners. And again, we could really go further into blockchain, but just visualize this picture right here. This sums up how blockchain works. And it's like this secure process of people making transactions and the miners making sure that nothing illegal is happening. Now, again, when I say illegal, I'm not saying illegal transactions. Like people could go and buy illegal weapons with uh, Bitcoin and it's on the dark web and people use it for illegal stuff. But the transactions itself can't be altered. So your money is secure. It's not like someone could steal your Bitcoin. That is why a lot of people are starting to believe in it and trust it. And it's been around for over a decade. And guess what? No one has been able to hack it yet. I say yet because who knows what could happen in the future. But right now, it is one of the most secure systems, and that's why this coin is worth, as I'm recording this, over $50,000 and has a market cap of over a trillion dollars. But more on that in a little bit. So now you're probably thinking, why would these miners ever want to contribute in this? What's in it for them? Well, that's simple. They get paid in Bitcoin. That's right. Just for them maintaining the server and mining, right, they actually get paid in Bitcoin. And you're probably thinking, well, where's this Bitcoin coming from? Well, there's a limited supply of Bitcoin. Now picture gold. There's only a certain amount, right? You can't create more gold. There's only a certain amount in the world. Well, that's also with Bitcoin. When it was first released, there was only a max supply of 21 million coins. You could never add or destroy any coins. So it's actually a deflationary asset. We don't have to worry about the government coming in and pumping out a whole bunch of dollars and over uh, inflating it. And then next thing you know, your money's worth nothing. Now, not every coin is released yet. And that's what the miners are doing. As they mine, more coins get released. Currently, there's around 18 million, well, 18.6 million coins in circulation, almost 18.7. Now you're probably thinking, wow, it looks like almost every single coin is released. Well, that's not true. A couple thousand coins are released every single day, and we will not see the last coin until year 2140. So chances are we'll all be long dead before then. All right, so I know that was a lot to take in to learn about this little coin, but this coin is not little at all. As I'm recording this, it is worth over a trillion dollars. That's bigger than PayPal. That's bigger than MasterCard. That's bigger than Visa right? All these massive companies that have been around for decades, Bitcoin has surpassed them in under 10 years. Bitcoin's been around for about 12 years now. No one has been able to hack into Bitcoin. And I hope my doodles kind of explain that. Now you know exactly what miners are. And again, one thing I want you to take away from it is all Bitcoin is, is this blockchain technology, which is like a public general ledger. And no government could step in and say, we're going to take full control of Bitcoin. It doesn't work that way. You have these people with their computers. And I'm not talking about, you know, a couple thousand dollar computer. You actually have these people investing hundreds of thousands of dollars into these massive servers that are mining Bitcoin. So any company could jump in on it. It does have a pretty expensive cost to do it. But that's not the thing to focus on. The thing to focus on is you can't have a government strong arm Bitcoin. And that's why you keep hearing the word decentralized. No one could control it. It's actually the public who gets to control the price. And the more people who believe in it, the higher the price will go. And that's because it's deflationary. Unlike the government just printing money out of nowhere, you can't do that with Bitcoin. There's only 21 million coins 
And not every single coin has been released yet, and that's what these miners are doing. As they maintain the server, they get rewarded as more coins are released. And you're probably thinking, what about after 2140? Does that mean Bitcoin's done for because these miners will have no incentive? Well, no, miners actually get paid two ways. One way is through actual coins that haven't been mined before. They're the first ones to receive it. And the second way is they actually get these small fees. Uh, so fees from people actually using the coin, well, those fees go to the miners. So after uh, 2140, these fees will slowly get a little bit bigger. So there's still that great incentive for miners to maintain all of these servers. Now my goal isn't to convince you in investing in Bitcoin. My goal was just for you to better understand it and understand how it works. It's not like this fake money. This is fake money. I mean, literally, this is fake money that I bought on Amazon, but the US dollar isn't backed by anything. It's like monopoly money. The government wants to print more. It has every right to do so, and it's done that over the past couple of years. And that's why $1 was worth a hell of a lot more back in 1960 than it is now. Right now, $1 could hardly get you anything. Meanwhile, Bitcoin started out at around 50 cents, and now it's worth $50,000. People think that it'll cap out at maybe 500,000 or even a million. You're thinking, well, how is that possible? Well, think of gold. Gold is over $10 trillion for the market cap. I don't know the exact number, but the thing is, Bitcoin being very similar to gold, people are mining it. It can't be created or destroyed. There's only a certain amount. If you see that like gold, and if we actually one day, I'm talking about decades in the future, adopt Bitcoin as our global currency, because that's the end goal, then yeah, it could easily have a market cap of $10 trillion or even more. I'm still learning about Bitcoin. I think I have a better understanding now. I'm keeping it still a relatively small amount of my portfolio because I still understand stocks better. I've been studying stocks for about four years now. Cryptos, I really started to take this dive down maybe in the past week or two. So again, I hope you guys like this video and as always, I will see you in the next one.